there yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Monday, April the 4th, 2022, and this is video number 144. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. It's been a while since I uploaded a podcast on what I've been up to, so I thought it was about time. As you know, I've taken on another job and things have been super busy, but I wanted to come in here and talk to you about what's been going on, some of my makes, some of my finished objects, and because I missed you, I want to talk about things that I've been up to here in the new to us community me and my husband Chad have moved into. So I hope that you'll stick with me for the next little while and enjoy the content that I am going to present. If you're new here and wondering what this is all about, hi, my name's Gary and I started this channel to talk about all of my yarny adventures. That is in knitting, crocheting, I do dabble in a little bit of hand dyeing of yarn and my acquisitions where I purchase things. So if that kind of thing is of interest to you, please stick around. So without further ado, let's look at my one and only finished object for this episode. Now this was a wonderful piece that I've been working on since around November of 2021. What are we at right now? April 2022. So a good four months of uh, crocheting. And here it is here. It is my uh, rice stitch blanket that I did holding two yarns together. One was a four weight yarn and a sock weight yarn or a sport weight because I went through quite a number of different sport weight and sock weight yarns. I wanted to get rid of some of my leftover yarn and also wanted to try some yarn out with this blanket to see how it worked up. So yeah, I'll talk to you about the yarn in a bit, but I just want to show you the size of the blanket and all the colors that made up this blanket in stripes. So this is the first ball of yarn that I used up. And then I went into a eight row of this rice stitch in the Caron Cloud Cake colorways called Graphite. Then I separated it for starting this red color here, finish that ball, and then again another eight rows with a Caron Cloud Cake, holding a sport weight or a fingering weight with it. And then this is the next colorway. This one is the, a pastel colorway, completed that one. Another eight rows using the Caron Cloud Cake, then a grey colourway. I held this one with variegated colours in the sock weight and the sport weight, so it gave it a little bit of a duo tone and a, a flashing of different colours, which worked out really nice. And then again the grey to separate the next ball. And then this one is the white and red. And it's, it's very, very heavy, this blanket. And then I separated again with another eight rows using the Caron Cloud Cakes. And last color that I used is this one here, which is kind of like a blue, green, sea glass type colorway. And I also held all of these balls of yarn that I've just shown you with sock weight or sport weight yarns. So hence why it's quite a heavy, a very heavy blanket. The size of it is four and a half feet in width and probably around six feet or thereabouts in length. A nice size blanket if you're sitting down wanting to cover your whole body. Uh, if you're reading a book, this will be sitting in our little ottoman uh, reading seat that we have in the bedroom. And I absolutely love it. It was quite an intense uh, workout for my hands when I got going on it. I probably had about, I'm going to say maybe two hour sessions with it and it did take me about four months to complete. Now let's take a look at the yarn that I used. Before I do that I'll just go and grab them from out of my bag. I've got some photographs of this where you can see the actual length of it and all of the all the colors laid out. So it's very hard for me to show you in the camera right now, but I'll be back in just a moment. Enjoy the photos.
I hope you liked the photo montage that I set up starting from when I began the blanket all the way through to the end in the photo montage. Now let's take a look at the yarn that I used. I don't have them in the sequence of when I actually made them, but I do have all of the labels that I could find. Some of them were yarn that was leftover yarn with no labels, so I do apologize I don't have every single thing that went in that blanket. But the majority of the blanket was in uh, Loops and Threads Eco Waves Multi and Eco Waves Solid Colors. And there's the label there. So each ball had 200 grams or giving me 453 meters. So quite a number of meters in there. And the yards are 496 yards. So I used six balls of these. This one is in the color black white. This one is in the color red. That's how much was left over. I didn't quite make it to the end of the row. So I wanted to color control and I had a little bit of yarn left over. This one here is called Red Cream. This one here is called Light Grey Pastels. This one here is called Sea Grey. Really like that color. And the last one is this one here, which is called Grassy Fields. So the in-between sections that I bracketed off each of the bars of color with was this one here. I completed a full cake and probably a quarter of this one here to complete the blanket. And it's the Caron Cloud Cakes, I'm holding that upside down, in the colorway graphite. Really, really soft. And all these yarns I held with a sock weight or a variegated sport weight yarn. And I have a few of the labels here, many of them of which I don't have labels left because there were just leftovers in my stash. And the few that I have here that I used the whole balls of were Yarn Up Pacific in the colorway 309. I used two of these balls. I used four of the balls here in Premier's Wool Free Sock Stripes in the colorway Farm Stand, which is a really nice color. It's very rich, uh, it uses a deep red, deep blue, and it went very, very nicely with the, with the red that was in the blanket. This one here was a cotton acrylic yarn and it was from Ice Yarns. It was one of their cakes called Cakes Remix and it graduated from the light pink or white and red strands and then throughout the course of the cake it would go darker and darker and darker till it got to uh, three strands of black and one strand of red to give it a nice dark quality. So I used a cake of that and I used one cake of the Queensland collection in cassowary. The colorway of this one is called graphite. So that was used right at the end with the sea, with the sea grays. And they're all combinations of different uh, mixtures of yarn as well. Like there was a cotton acrylic blend. There were 100% acrylic. There was also acrylic and wool blends. Uh, and I believe this last one here, let's have a look. The Queensland collection was 70% wool, 30% nylon. So quite a mixture of all different yarns. And I know it's gonna be quite a challenge to wash, but what I'm gonna do is just cold wash on gentle in the machine and I will lay flat to dry. Next up are uh, works in progress. 
This one that I'm going to show you is one that I presented with a sketch of an idea that I had on a jean jacket inspired cable cardigan. And I worked on it up to the point where I think I'm about an inch or two away from, from splitting for the arms. I'm working bottom up and here is what I have so far. So I'm working both the front and the back panels together in the um, on the one set of circular needles. And this is the back panel with the three cables that run from the waistline and they'll run all the way up to where I'm going to do a detail in the top part of the back. And then it will go into a different stitch for the shoulders and around the shoulders. This is the front panel here. Both front panels have two cables in front and I am doing my buttonholes kind of like with three inches apart from one another and there will be probably five buttons all the way up from the base to the neck to the kind of the neck around here and I've got a detail in the side part of the the work which is reverse stockinette I will perhaps maybe carry that reverse stockinette up underneath the arm, below the arm, uh, the sleeve, and all the way to the wristband. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's using less yarn than I thought it would. I am using uh, Stitch Studio by Nicole, their Earth Tone collection, and it is in the colorway squash. I have pretty much maybe a quarter left in this ball. And I think that will do me to complete the, the front panels up here and also maybe towards the back. And I have another two balls of this yarn as well. I think I might only need two to complete the jean jacket inspired cable cardigan. I know it's a mouthful and I'll have one left over. So I'm really liking working with the yarn. It's not splitting. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter uh, set of cables, uh, needles, and the length of the cable with the needles is 29 inches. So it's doing me pretty good to get the 42 inch panel all the way around. And it's not, it's not bunching up too much. And I'm really, really liking working with the yarn. It's quite soft. It'll be an easy to care for uh, acrylic. It's 100% acrylic and it's considered a four weight yarn. Unfortunately, this brand of yarn, Stitch Studio by Nicole was A. Seymour's house brand and it's no longer available, but I really wanted to use it up because I've been sitting on this for about two years. I purchased two balls from A. Seymour because they in the day when they were operating, they did ship to Canada. And I got my third ball from Crystal over at Bag of Day. So I want to say thank you, Crystal, for supplying me with this wonderful yarn as well to make my, my sweater. Absolutely love it. Moving right along to the next work in progress is a new cast on I cast on about five days ago. I'm about four hours into it. It is slow going because there are lots of new things for me to learn in the technique of this knitted pattern. And it is to the Exploration Station by Stephen West. I'm absolutely loving the pattern and the learns. About six weeks ago, I asked all you for some advice and help me choosing a color way to uh, make the shawl in. And it was probably even Stephen, excuse the pun, where it was, whether it would be the cool colorway or the warm colorway. So I ended up choosing the cool colorway and I have plans for the warm colorway on a new pattern that I purchased. I'll talk about that once I begin it, but here it is here, the exploration station. I'm still up to the wedge section of the shawl. And what I found was uh, new to me was the I-cord cast on beginning with an I-cord and then the short rows creating lace work 
on these edges here. That was kind of new to me. I was very happy that Stephen West had a couple of tutorial videos out there on his YouTube channel, which I'll link down below to how I discovered how to do this iCord cast on. And yeah, it's hard to see the full entirety of this scarf right uh, of this shawl right now because it is on needles still and it's kind of scrunching up and it needs to be blocked but i do like the color choices those are the four colors there and my highest contrasting color was this dark or is this dark blue so it's great for edging these wedges and it will showcase and feature the edging very well of the actual shawl itself I'm using 4.5 needles and the length of the needles are 40 inches. That's what the pattern called for. And just to give you a look at what the pattern looks like and where I found the pattern was in this publication here called West Knits Best Knits number one. And the featured scarf or shawl on the front here is from is the pattern that I'm doing, Exploration Station. So you can see that that has a kind of rock and roll feel to it with this web-like uh, border for the edging. And that will be in my navy blue. So the four colors that I've chosen, I'll talk to you about that, is housed in a project bag that I purchased from a Canadian maker and I bought this from her Etsy store. It is the seller called Jezebel B. That's her label there. And I absolutely love, I don't know whether it's called a saddle bag, but it reminds me of something that would hang off the side of uh, like a, a horse or, you know, like a carry on case for a horse in the olden days. So I I call it my saddlebag. <laughs> I don't know whether that's the right term, but I will include the Etsy store down below and she just has amazing makes. I love them so much. I'm not affiliated with this uh, store. I just really liked her product. It's very, very well made. The inside has a different fabric for lining in this pinstripe style fabric and the outside is quite a coarse canvas which is nice and durable and it's a jeans kind of denim -y bottom here which is nice it doesn't have the box bottom but it holds around four skeins of 100 grams and that's what i'm using for my stephen west pattern that i'm working on the exploration station let's take a look at the yarn that i'm using First yarn here does not have a colorway name, but it is from Vancouver Island, a dyer from this area that I live in. And it is called Sweater Maker Yarns. And this one here is, if I was to describe it, it's kind of like a uh, cabalt blue going into more of the ultramarine blue. And it does have tonal effects to it as well like the yarn dye does not saturate completely in all the yarn areas it does have a little bit of the breaking showing the yarn underneath the second color b that i'm using is from a gift that i got sorry i'm showing you the top of my head there here is a gifted yarn from Kerry Penny, and she's from the Happy Crafty Homemaker. Hi, Kerry. And it is from the Yarn Dyer City Queen yarn, and the colorway is called King Neptune. So it's my color B. My color C is a Knit Picks. Sorry, a Knit, no, it is Knit Picks. A Knit Picks yarn, and it's from their Hawthorne selection that they have called Spring Water. So that's Spring Water there. This is more of the lighter blue, kind of a acid wash. 
effect. And that's the colour C. Colour D, the fourth colour, is... I'm not going to be able to pronounce this one's name, but here it is here. <laughs> and this yarn was generously gifted to me by my husband for my birthday last year. So I wanted to jump in here and use it. And I'm not sure what the colour is on this one either. It does have... Oh, there we go. Dancing Machine. That's the colour name for it. If you are interested. Did I hold that the right way up? I think I did. So those are my four colours. And I have them in my lovely saddlebag. Which I absolutely love. There we go. 400 gram skeins. The next part of the episode that I want to talk about is what I've been up to. And this does involve some yarny content as well. So I hope that you'll join in and watch the next little while. If not, and you've just stuck around for the yarn content, I want to say thank you for joining in. And if you want to stick around, I want to say you're welcome to. So let's get stuck into what I've been up to here in the new to me community where me and my husband Chad have moved into recently. So there are some yarny goodness in the next little stories that I've got to share with you because I celebrated my birthday last weekend and me and my husband went down to the capital of BC, which is my province, British Columbia and it's called Victoria. It's at the base of the Vancouver Island where I live, about two and a half hours to two, two hours and 40 minutes away from where I live. And we enjoyed a night out on the town. We stayed in a hotel. I did a little bit of yarn shopping. I explored and I've got some video clips where I want to um, add them in where you can see what we got up to. So I'll include them here. Leading up to my birthday, I did receive some wonderful cards and presents in the post. I also received wonderful presents and cards from my family, which I won't share here. It's not really yarn related, but the few things that I did receive that are yarn related here, I won't read out the cards on video, but I have read them, is this card here. If you recall, I had a friend stay over and there was a couple of hours of teaching of knitting and us knitting on the couch downstairs. So I want to say thank you for sending this card. It has some fun sentiments in it and I will be available if you want to learn something new. Perhaps maybe you've already surpassed me with your... Uh, skills and you can teach me a, new th a few new things with knitting. And a very dear friend that I care for a lot sent me a beautiful package that is my friend Penny Bolton and I received this beautiful package in the post and I love the the wrapper. It does have these watercolored feathers. I've never seen anything like that before. So I've already opened it, as you can tell. I was so anxious to see what was in it. But here is the beautiful card. And I'll read the card's inscription, uh, but not the message. 
Three wishes for you, your birthday. Happy times, friends to love, shiny skies, sunny skies to shine above you. Wishing you everything beautiful on your special day. Thank you so much, Penny. Now in the package, there were, you guessed it, yarn, which I absolutely love. And they're also squishy and soft and the colors relate to one another. They could be worked up instantly into a color work, uh, whatever, a uh, scarf, a shawl, just amazing. So what did I get? Let's take a look. So soft. Yep, definitely can wear that against my skin with no problems whatsoever. It is Aldine Wools in the collection called Sleek. I believe these are Knit Crate because I did read it on the tag here. Yes, it is Knit Crate's yarn. And the colorway is called Unwind. And the content is 55 Fine Merino Wool, 30% Baby Alpaca, 15 Marlboro Silk. It's 100 grams in each skein, which gives me 220 yards. Machine wash on gentle and lay flat to dry. There's a little note here that says, all Aldine wool yarns are made exclusively for knit crate. And I love that green. It's like a mid kind of green. And I like it. It's a nice base for sure especially with these colors. Now, this one isn't green, but it does have green in it. It's not fully green. You've got some limeish color green in there and yellow, and it has sparkle. I don't know whether you can see, oh, there we go. You can see that sparkle there. That must be some sort of Stellina. So this is a Penny Bolton original hand dyed yarn. And she dyed it with Kool-Aid. I absolutely love it. Penny, if you ever are interested in going out on the road and dyeing up some yarn, you definitely have an audience there with this type of result here. I absolutely love it. Reminds me of uh, unicorn colors, like something happy and youthful. Now, this is on the Stroll Glimmer. It's a fingering weight yarn, and in this you get 100 grams, which gives me 462 yards. It uh, is a number one or fine yarn, super fine yarn, and it's 70% fine super wash merino wool and 25% nylon with 5% stellina. You can machine wash this and tumble dry on low. And the last one here, which is kind of variegates from this more pale, pale, lemony, limeish green. So it's like a, a light yellow green. And then it goes to more of a stronger strength here. So it will probably work up tonally. And it's called Vidalana Delight Sock by Knit Crate. Now this one is called Walking Dead and it is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, fingering weight yarn. You get 100 grams in this hank, giving me 402 yards or six, uh, sorry, 366 meters. It is machine washable and to lie, lay flat to dry. Yeah. Really, really soft. Thank you so much for this. I absolutely love it. Included with all these wonderful gifts and cards that I received for my birthday, I did treat myself and I did go online and I made some purchases for my birthday. I'd been working really hard, so I thought I needed to treat myself. Nothing on a huge scale. And I wanted to support some local Canadian companies and brands. So when I went looking for things that I wanted to purchase, I purchased mostly from Canada. The saddlebag from the uh, the project bag maker that I purchased from, she was from Quebec 
and I found a new to me yarn store online in Nova Scotia that I absolutely fell in love with. They had lots of new to me yarn dyers that I'd not known of before. So I wanted to jump in and see some of the yarns that they had dyed and whether or not I would fall in love with any uh, one particular yarn dyer. So I found Darn Yarn in Nova Scotia. I'll link their shop down below. Now this is not affiliated with them whatsoever. I purchased all this with my own money. And I got three hanks of hand dyed yarn. And I wanna talk about them. So this card came in with the package from the store, Darn Yarn. And it is from Alan and Kelly. And there's their little caricatures down below. Super cute. And it just says, thanks for supporting us with a little bit of how I can give back my feedback on Facebook and social media. So let's get stuck into the yarn that I purchased. So I got these three here. And I will start off with this one. It is from Emily C. Gillies. I think that's how you pronounce that name. It is a Merino sock, 80% superwash Merino, 20% nylon. It's a three ply fingering yarn, 115 grams, which gives me 220, oh, sorry, 420 yards or 384 meters. It's in the colorway Terabithia. Must be some sort of plant, maybe. I'm not sure what Terabithia is, but it is an, a nice caramelly gold mustardy color. And it does, no, it looks pretty saturated and all the one color, maybe slightly tonal. Really, really nice and soft. Absolutely love it. Love the yarn. It was $28 Canadian. All the price points will be in Canadian currency as it is a Canadian store. The yarn dyer of this hank here is from Ontario, Canada. The next one up is from Quebec, Canada, and I probably will butcher the name because uh, it is a French name here. And this one is Best Du Fleur, 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 oh my God. It's so, sorry about that. I don't know what that is. I absolutely love the yarn though. It has a squish factor to it. It has softness. It is wonderfully dyed to be a great tonal between these greys. And I really like the end result of this one. It slightly looks uh, like it's been a little bit, I don't know, fuzzy, and maybe from handling that it's uh, pulled some of the, the fibers away from the yarn. And the colorway here is called Chabon. It's color lot 193. It is a fingering weight yarn, 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. I get 100 grams, which gives me 400 meters or 437 yards. It is, uh, I don't know, it's hand dyed. Uh, I can hand wash in cold water, lay flat to dry. And I absolutely love the color. It has a little bit of a sheen to it as well. So I really like that. So great for stitch definition. Next up is this Hank here. The last one in the three that I purchased. It is called Nerds with Needles. Like the name. I really wanted to try a speckly yarn. So when I saw this on the website, I, it jumped at me, out at me. And it does have a slight wash there of a flesh tone. So that's kind of like a little pinkish, a little peachy and then sprinkles of blue, which sometimes break to bleed in with this flesh tint. 
and create a slight more purplish color. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the yarn. It is 75% superwash extra fine merino, 15% cashmere, 10% silk. They are suggesting for care instructions on the label to machine wash cold and dry flat. The hank is 100 grams, giving me 382 yards. It's classified a one super fine weight yarn or a fingering weight yarn. And I really like it. My favorite is definitely, ah, uh, I have a hard time. I'm gonna have to say that this caramelly color is probably my favorite yarn out of the three, but I really like them. I think these two will work well together in a brioche or maybe if I do some color work, but I do love this caramel color. So this yarn here is from Nova Scotia, very close to the Darn Yarn bricks and mortar store where they do all their online packing. And this one here is from Quebec, the gray one. And this one here is from Ontario. So three new yarn dyers that I'm exploring. And I think that these two will work out really nicely together. Oh, the price point on this one was 30 Canadian dollars. I think it, it was a little bit more because of the cashmere in it, the contents and silk. Now the yarny goodness is out of the way. I can talk to you about what I have in my notes on what I've been watching on TV. Now these are series and there's a movie as well. The first one is a series. It is called Inventing Anna. And there are a couple of episodes, I think eight, all in all, and it finishes the whole uh, kick a boodle in eight season, uh, sorry, eight episodes. So it's a nice little compact, you know, you can binge watch it or watch a few here and there. And it talks about a character who embezzles money from people. Now it is based in New York and it's set up, I believe in the nineties or early two thousands. And the character is based on a real life person and you never really get to know who the identity is of the person. Perhaps maybe there is some sort of like a clue there, but you're not never really sure, or I wasn't anyway. And uh, this character weaves their way into the high society and high profile people in New York, uh, where they're trusting her with certain uh, money, monetary, uh, transactions and shopping and all that sort of thing. So she takes her, her, uh, I guess her, she takes advantage of all of that. And then it goes into the court case and how, uh, it's discovered and a reporter is reporting on her story as well. So there is all these angles of pulling out the story from the main character, from the, interviewer who is the reporter and then the legal side which are the lawyers and then all of her friends as well that know her in uh, the high society world. The I'm looking at my notes so I do apologize for looking down. There's another series as well that I've just started watching five episodes into it called Afterlife. Now that's Ricky Gervais and he is the main actor from the get-go, episode one, it does set up the whole scenario of a character, Ricky Gervais's character, who is struggling through a death of his wife to cancer, uh, but plays these videos back and continually plays them back over the course of what I've watched so far. So the character of his wife is very much ingrained into the story. And it's his way of coping, also his support that he gets from his family, his therapist and other friends that he meets along the way where he kind of bumps into and struggles with all of these different, I guess, uh, grieving processes. Uh, the last one is a movie that I'm going to suggest, and it's a great colourful 
beautiful costume movie and it's called Nightmare Alley. I believe it might have been an Oscar nominee. It has a whole slew of uh, A-grade <laughs> A great actors and I'll just reel a few of them off although there are many many more in this. There's Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett, Tony Collette, Rooney Mari, uh, there's William Defoe, just to name a few but it is a great story of building up characters and how they tear each other down. Uh, it's kind of like a roller coaster of events that happen but all done in a beautiful film noir kind of lighting and style technique. I really enjoyed it. Those series and that movie, Nightmare Alley, are uh, suggestions if you're crocheting away or knitting away and you need some company and enjoying a show while you're producing your crafts. Uh, I hope that you enjoy them if you do decide to watch them. If you've watched them, I want to hear your response to them. Did you like them as well? And with that, I think that catches you up on everything. I know that I'm not here often. I try and get back every two weeks now. But with my job and then working at home as well on my other work, I have very little time to film. So I hope everyone is doing well. I do miss you and I hope you are having a great week. I'll speak to you in the next episode. Bye for now.